As of yesterday, I officially finished this book, How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. This is my dad's copy of the book from 1995 when he went through the seminar, when he was about my age. And I borrowed this from my parents' house and read through it. I enjoyed it, learned so much, and ultimately it's reinforced what by default I've learned as a 40-year-old man. Uh, on my videos here, I often point out that for me, around age 35, that's when the light bulb started coming on as far as me understanding how the world actually works. Like For example, your opinion doesn't actually matter, and that's, that's shocking for a lot of people. They think that their opinion is everything. In reality, it often makes it harder for people to like you because it makes you more divisive. It only reinforces the concept of tribalism. So if you're not in the same group as them, it actually makes them like you less. So when you're more agreeable, people naturally like you more because you're less selfish and you're more focused on other people. But that's ultimately what this book's about. One of the major takeaways is how mainly people want to talk about themselves. So it's always about focusing on other people. And it's funny, I feel that I've been uh, working on this craft myself in my personal life, even, even at work I'll notice this, that when we're on a video call, I try not to talk a lot, but what I try to do is talk enough. So I will insert a comment or an idea or a compliment to someone's good idea so that my voice is heard and they know who I am. But typically, I don't take up a lot of screen time. I don't actually spend a lot of time talking about myself. If I spend a lot of time talking, it's only to actually talk about a concept to help other people. Basically, I'm helping them by teaching them something and then I stop talking and then I'll let them take it from there. And I've, for lack of a better word, I think I've deceived a lot of people, especially at work. They see me as very talkative. In reality, I'm not spending a lot of time talking. What, I'm, what I, want, I want to call it the conversation grenade. And what happens is I initiate conversations that allow other people to do the talking. So I'm basically hosting a conversation, but it's not really about me. Now, granted, in, I may tell a short story that says what I'm doing this weekend. I won't spend a lot of time doing it, but then they'll say, oh, well, th that reminds me of, and then they start talking. So ultimately, what do people really want? They want to talk about themselves. So if you recognize that and think, what would make people actually like me? Instead of talking about myself, if I can get that other person talking about themselves, if I can remember their name, and remember to follow up on things that they mentioned last time. People ultimately want to feel important. They want to feel validated. So what if you make it your purpose to put the attention on them? It's, and it's funny, while this book was written in the 1930s, he often references Jesus in here and it makes me think of Jesus walk, cleaning the disciples' feet. And even when Peter said, no, you know, may it never be kind of thing. And Jesus said, that he, that that's his purpose is to serve other people. What is the meaning of life? To bring meaning to life, to bring meaning to other people's lives. And it's not by how great am I, it's how can I help other people? How can I learn more about you? It's what I've learned from this book specifically is how everybody wants to feel important. And that's often why people want to talk about themselves. I know this sounds ironic and a paradox from a guy who runs a YouTube channel and can talk for eight minutes straight without any studying or preparation at all. But in real life, in real life to have a conversation with me, it's totally my goal to say just enough to get that person talking so that I can stop talking. Not that I have a problem filling the airwaves, but in real life, I know that I am more of a likable person and people will feel better about themselves after talking to me by ultimately, by letting me put them in a position where they're able to talk and that I can listen. And by listen, I mean that I'm smiling and looking at them and I'm not inserting a lot, interrupting them, that sort of thing. This is all Dale Carnegie sort of stuff. It may seem like manipulation, but when it comes down to it, this is how we're wired as human beings. So ultimately, what an advantage you have. 
how easy it is to be liked. And the irony of it is, it's not to say, hey, look at how great I am. It's more to say, I'm interested in you. I'm going to say just enough to get you talking about yourself. And that makes people like you. It's, it's that simple. And on a similar note, what's the most powerful language phrase in, in the world? That own person's name, no matter what their name is. If that's their name, that's how you get their attention. So to look at them in the eyes, to be smiling, which shows that you're interested, to say their name, and to say just enough to get them to keep talking. And even when you do say something, even if it is about yourself, you say it very quickly, and then pause and let them have the mic again. What they don't realize, as I've basically kind of deceived a lot of people on my team at work on our video calls, I've made them think that I talk a lot. But really, I'm just hosting a conversation. I'm saying just enough so that they can do the talking. So that no one thinks I'm a quiet guy. I say just enough. I throw that conversation grenade. Because people want to talk about themselves. Even quiet people, even introverts, they want to talk about themselves. Now, granted, that doesn't mean everyone wants a whole lot of attention on themselves. That's different. But still, to have a conversation with another human being, what do they want? They want someone to show interest in them. They want to, they're looking for a way to talk about themselves, even if they're shy or quiet. It's actually that much more powerful if you find a way to initiate a conversation, if they get them talking about themselves. On the opposite side, I recently sat down at dinner with a man who talked about himself the complete hour while, while we were eating. And I knew that about him going into it. So what I did as an experiment, and I told my wife this too, what I was doing. I said, I'm gonna make a point to not ever even vocalize. I'm gonna smile at him, and I'm gonna look at him in the eyes as we're eating. And I'm gonna see if at any point he recognizes that I don't even make a vocalization. Because he needed that much feeling of importance that he wanted a captive audience. So I gave that man exactly what he wanted. So a whole hour of my time, this was me, I promise this was me. I made zero vocalizations. If I needed to, I would have. He never stopped to ask me a question. This was all he needed. For a whole hour, I made no vocalizations at all, and he never noticed it. But as far as investments go, as far as relationships goes, he probably sees me as a very likable person because he sees me as a good listener. And he probably thinks I'm interesting, even though I said zero words and didn't even go, mm hmm I didn't even do that. But ultimately, you size people up accordingly. How can I give them the attention that they need? Because most people need it more than even you do. But if it's the secret to getting them to like you and to build relationships, why not just give them the thing that they need? And that is that time and that attention and someone to do a little bit of investigating by asking them just enough questions to get them talking about themselves. That's the secret. I've now read this book. I was already kind of implying using this method as I've kind of learned just by default in life. But if you haven't checked out this book, check it out. It's totally worth reading. And I don't read a lot of books. In fact, this is the first book I've read in probably eight years.